I thanks for watching this video. If you're thinking about visiting the Puget Sound area for diving, I recommend coming in the month of May, unless you want to practice in low visibility conditions. I'm convinced after two years of diving here that the month of May has the worst feeling. But I hear it's in part due to the fresh water mixing with the salt water from rain and snow melt. Plus there's algae blooms in the springtime. And it looks to me like pollen in the air that gets just suspended in the water. Today's video is a combination of two different dives in two different locations. The visibility was so bad on both dives that the footage didn't turn out very well for the most of it. The first dive at Redondo was the worst conditions I've seen, but we did manage to spot a small stubby squid thanks to my dive buddies Melanie and Jeremy for pointing it out. Even though the visibility was pretty poor at 80 feet, it was still cool to see this stubby squid and the video turned out okay because I was able to get up pretty close. give you an idea why dive lights are necessary in these conditions, even on a dead dive in the daylight. The glow of the light really stands out when you can barely see your buddy who's just feet away. When videoing with a GoPro in these conditions, video lights and getting up close make a big difference. The Macromate Mini I use helps things stay in, in focus when getting up really close. The visibility at Redondo was so bad, I thought it was kind of funny and entertaining just how bad it was. At times I couldn't even see one foot. I was looking at my dive buddy's fins and I couldn't see his ankle. The next dive is at Three Tree Point. It was a really windy night and it was a high tide. Visibility wasn't great, but not nearly as bad as it was at Redondo. Jack and I saw a lot of flounder, a chimera, also known as a ratfish, and a little octopus. I was leading and we didn't find the things we normally see, partly because I couldn't see landmarks to navigate by. 